here in Chip and I'm here in Seattle, Washington. I'm here at the Cake Spy Shop, owned by none other than Head Cake Spy, Jesse Olson. I have a few questions for her and she's agreed to talk with me. Um, Jesse, when did the light bulb go on for you to, to start blogging? I can tell you the exact day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because it was the day I had taken a half day at my day job. I was previously the art director at a refrigerator magnet company. True story. <laughs> and I took the half the day off to get my marriage certificate um, at City Hall because you have to get your, uh, I don't know, you have to legally get your certificate before right. you can get married. Um, right. So I decided to take the long way and walk home and um, so that I could walk by a bakery that I was considering for my wedding cake. And I stopped in the Olympic Sculpture Park in Seattle and sat down and I was just kind of thinking to myself, gosh, what, what is going on? You know, like, I, I feel like this is a really big time of change for me and I felt like I really wanted to embrace that. So. I was thinking about starting my own business and I was like, well, in your ideal world, what would this business involve? So I thought to myself, well, what do you love? <laughs> and what came to me was writing, illustrating, and baked goods. And I was like, well, great, what do I do with that? <laughs> um, and so it came to me because I was doing all of these wedding cake tastings, I kind of felt like this undercover spy, you know, trying to find the best one. And I was like, well, cake spy, I really like that. And it feels so open-ended, so I was like, well, while I figure out what I'm going to do, I'll start a blog. Because I guess that's what people do. Um, and it never occurred to me that having a blog could be the launch pad for all of the things that I do now. but. That it and that was it, and then you just started it, and it's yeah. just become what it is. That is, that's amazing. <laughs> that's a great story. <laughs> so I consider you to be a Jill of all trades. Uh, is there one thing that you feel, one aspect of all the things that you do, that maybe you do stronger? Well, it's funny that you should ask that, because um, when I was 11 years old, I was so certain that I wanted to be a professional writer. And I, at the time, had submitted a story to Stone Soup Magazine, which is a magazine written and illustrated by children. And um, to differentiate my submission, I had drawn pictures on the envelope. And they wrote back and uh, uh, respectfully declined the story, but they asked if they could buy the illustrations and they were willing to pay me $50 each for, I think, three illustrations. And at the tender age of 11, I thought to myself, <laughs> oh. illustrating is where it's at. <laughs> I'm going to be an artist. Um, so I guess in that way I kind of sold out. But uh, I did end up going to art school. Um, but I always felt like rather than um, just being an artist, the magic of what I do has always come through kind of a combination of my writing and words um, and artwork and just kind of the spark of creativity. And um, on my website, the, that language has been translated through baked goods as well. Right. Right. Now you do so much. You're uh, a wife. Uh, shop owner, manufacturer, an illustrator, an author. You do so much. Is there a point in time where you just get overwhelmed or maybe you might even feel like overexposed? Every day. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll, you know, having so much going on, it can be good because you're never necessarily bored, but it can make it hard to focus on just one thing, um, because certainly all of the things that you described I am, um, and you know, sometimes uh, one role takes precedent over the other, depending on the projects that I'm working on, but, um, but 
gosh, I won't lie, it can be overwhelming. You know, I've had my fair share of moments where I just have to like go to the bathroom and cry and be like, <laughs> oh my god, what, what am I going to do? Like, you know. But you're smiling today, yes. and that's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> You probably cry with a smile. <laughs> yes. Well, it's like, you know, you get it out of your system and then you get Very stuff done. done. Yeah, that's right. You got to. Okay. Have you ever been recognized? Now, and I'm not talking about being in Seattle. I'm talking about being somewhere else in the country where, where people have recognized you as Jesse Olsen, the cake spy. And, and did you sign autographs? I have been, yes. I knew it! <laughs> Well, you are recognized. I mean, you are you are not like everybody else. It's true. And I do have sparkly glasses. With so. cupcakes on the side. <laughs> so you have. You're a star. Yes. This it has happened a few times. And, um... Does it always catch you off guard? Always. I, I mean, like, I always joke with friends and... A, even new acquaintances that I'm a minor internet celebrity. <laughs> um, it's it's funny because I um, gosh I was I was just in um, uh, Denver and I was with a friend and going around to some bakeries and you know I I don't introduce myself as like hey I'm I'm here at the, the shop and I am the, the cake spy <laughs> but. Um, you know, I went and then I did a blog post about it and um, she was like, I totally knew it was you, you know. I, I was like, oh man. It's just like, yeah, your spy days are over. <laughs> You're undercover. It's, yeah, it's it's humbling though and um, it's it's awesome but it's also weird. <laughs> right, yeah, it does catch you off guard, yeah. doesn't it? Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> So, what would be your favorite dessert? Are you a cake person, cupcakes, cookies? What tickles your fancy? I will tell you, my weakness is bars. Bar oh, cookies. Okay, there you go. Um, and crumb cake. And when I say crumb cake, I do not mean coffee cake. I mean the East Coast, you know, one third yellowy cake to two-thirds big fat brown sugar crumbs. <laughs> that, I could, like, that is last meal territory for me. And bar cookies. Magic cookie bars, um, blondies, special K bars. Um, oh, I just love them. And you are definitely a confirmed baker, but are you a cook as well? Um, I am a cook by default, um, because, you know, out of my husband and I, I'm the one who does the food stuff, but my savory culinary skills, I think, would be, um, approximately the level of shake and bake. <laughs> um, I, I... Just, I think that I just don't have as much of an interest in it, which is funny because as an artist, a lot of people think that, you know, I'd be more attuned to the, oh, throw a little bit of this and adjust to taste right. aspect, but um, for me, there's just a certain magic to baking. You know, you put together these ingredients and then you put it in the oven and, you know, 20 minutes, an hour later, it has magically turned into something. Whereas with cooking, it's like, feels like you just have to take so much more care of it. And, <laughs> That's so know. funny that to hear you say that. Yeah. <laughs> so at my house, it's a lot of um, like Trader Joe's veggies yes. in a bag and veggies mac and it. cheese. The microwave is your friend. The microwave is my friend. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jesse. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us, and good luck in the future with the launch of your new book, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my store, which is a minefield of magic. <laughs> thank you for watching. Remember to eat something sweet every day.